-hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, I, uh, I wanted to start out by, by talking about uh, my household that I grew up in and the uh, place where I lived and how it's all you know, been very important. But, um, but the first thing is my family. Um, I grew up uh, in a household of three women. There was no man in the house. My mother was a widow. And um, uh, it was my mother um, who was absolutely fearless. She was daughter of Norwegian immigrants. Um, she is a real life Cinderella. Uh, her, her mother had died in the 1917 uh, flu pandemic. And she was, uh, you know, found herself with a stepmother who she claimed was abusive. And she had to do all the chores in the house. And she had a stepsister that just sat around and did nothing. So my mother eloped when she was 15 uh, with the son of a wealthy man. My, my grandfather was a, a, a marine a mechanic at a, um, at a marine a boat mechanic and where um, the man she loved with, his father kept his yacht at this marina. So it made um, national news, it was in the paper, and um, uh, uh, she fought her father in court, uh, who claimed she was kidnapped and threatened to have her committed to the welfare cottage as an incorrigible minor. Uh, but they won the lawsuit and uh, she stayed married and moved to Miami. And she uh, later uh, became a photographer, and this is a photograph of her uh, photographing in a nightclub uh, in Miami Beach. The other person that was living in our house was my grandmother, uh, who um, had uh, was just, she was brilliant. She was educated in Europe. She was a novelist, a poet, a musician. She was a Washington DC socialite. She was the national president of the uh, National League of American Pen Women. And she was president of the Miami Women's Club. Uh, she was a political speech writer. Um, uh, she wrote speeches for presidents, senators, you name it. Um, and she was a real estate developer. Uh, the family had come down to Miami uh, 1913, so they were, you know, early uh, developers, and uh, she um, she gave five acres of land and five thousand dollars to build the first hospital for African Americans in Miami. And this is the dedication of that hospital. And this is my grandmother here in the uh, white dress and the hat, and this is what the de dedication. Uh, the, the third person living in our house was my Aunt Zira, and who was my godmother. Um, she was adopted uh, from an orphanage in Georgia, and she was sent to live with my grandmother's sister in England, who was a baroness, uh, the Baroness de Sace. Uh, the Aunt Zira was educated at the convent of the Assumption in Paris. She returned to the United States when she was 22, and she married a fabulously wealthy man who was 47 years older than her. Uh, but it, it, when I was growing up, um, as she was a widow, and um, this is actually me in the little baby bassinet there next to my Aunt Zira, and it's at the cabana at um, Crandon Park in Miami, um, but she taught me how to curtsy in case I ever met the queen and she would read me uh, Rud Rudyard Kipling uh, stories. She's a fascinating woman. So I grew up in Carl Gables, um, which has got to be one of the most beautiful cities in the United States. Uh, around every corner was something beautiful. And these are fountains that we played in when we were kids. Um, the municipal buildings were just fabulous. Um, and it was just such a romantic place to uh, grow up. Um, the Venetian pool, I lived at the Venetian pool in the summertime and I, um, 
This is the gates going into the Venetian pool. It's just a wonderland. Uh, it's the largest freshwater swimming pool in the United States, uh, maybe the world. Uh, it's 800,000 gallons of water, it had caves. These are caves in the background here. Waterfall, uh, lush uh, tropical plants. And it was just a wonderful place to spend the whole summer. I learned how to swim here when I was like five years old. Um, and they drain the pool in the summertime. They drain the pool every night and it fills up from the Florida aquifer every morning, uh, which is just, just amazing. So it's fresh water, no chemicals. Um, and you see the color of the rocks there, that's from the minerals. And if you had a white bathing suit by the end of the summer, your bathing suit was that color. <laughs> um, so this, I'm gonna put this slide up because this is one of my first drawings that my mother always kept. And I just wanna show that all children start out the same way. When, when you're born, uh, everybody draws exactly the same, but then if, if you pursue it and you really want to be an artist and you pursue it and you look and you study and you draw all the time and you develop your talent. Um, so when I was growing up, these are the paintings that were on the wall in my house. These are two, I'm gonna show you two of the paintings. Uh, my grandmother was a big art collector and had collected art from all over the world. And so this, um, this is an Italian painting. I don't know the artist. I can't find a signature anywhere. Um, but there's a story here. It's obvious that this artist is painting a nun, painting her portrait, and he's fallen in love with her and trying to kiss her, whatever. Uh, so <laughs> I just thought, well, you know, growing up and looking at these paintings and, and this painting, uh, this is uh, Angiolo Lemmy. Um, and again, there's a story here. What's going on? There's a story. And so these, this is what I grew up with. And uh, also, this was on the wall in our house, Maxfield Parish uh, prints. So to me, uh, artwork always, it was narrative and it was story. And that's what I was interested in. Um, my um, uh, first uh, art prize, I was in the sixth grade and it was an art contest for the 40th anniversary of Carl Gables. And I won for my elementary school. And what I painted was this, uh, the Granada entrance. I don't have the painting anymore, but this is what I painted. And, and I won $10, <laughs> uh, a $10 savings account. Um, so, um, so then as uh, I got older and you know high school and I would go to the library and just to go through art books just looking at pictures. I was um, fascinated with Japanese woodcuts and also um, with the uh, Art Nouveau, uh, um, mostly the posters. This is Alphonse Mucha on the right and the uh, Japanese woodblock on the left is actually uh, one that I own. It was uh, my husband's family. Okay. It's not advancing to the next slide. Okay. Um, I also love the Pre-Raphaelites. Uh, this is Malaeus. Um, it's the death of Ophelia and is probably one of the most iconic Pre-Raphaelite paintings. Uh, everybody loves it. And so I'm not alone there. <laughs> um, this is a, a poster that I had for years hanging in, in my house. It's um, a water house, it's Hylus and the Water Nymphs. I loved Greek mythology, I loved fairy tales, I loved folklore, and so that's what I was really drawn to. Okay. Um, this is a painting I saw later, uh, uh, way after. Um, uh, uh, this is Della Roche, and I saw this at the Louvre, and it was so much like the death of Ophelia. Ophelia. I thought, why had I never seen these paintings in all the art history uh, classes that I took? I'm, you know, minored in art history, and I was never, 
I just don't remember ever seeing the French romantics. Um, so when I went to the Louvre the first time, I was just like blown away. Um, as an Amer American painting, I, I loved uh, Edward Hopper. Uh, he's one of my favorite Americans. Um, and then this, this is a Danish uh, painter, uh, Wilhelm Hamishoy, that, that I discovered later after I was even, I was, you'll see later, I was working a certain way, but I had never seen this artist before or any of the Scandinavian painters uh, until I, I went over uh, uh, to Norway. Um, so this is, I, it, uh, I majored in printmaking um, at FSU. And this is uh, one of my first prints. Um, uh, it's a woodblock print. And I believe the inspiration is from the Blue Mist Motel in Miami Beach. <laughs> Just, I think when, when I uh, created this, I, I must have had this motel and these um, uh, sculptures outside the motel in my mind. But this was a time, this is, um, uh, 1971 and 72-3, uh, it was a time of women's liberation. And um, I, I just, the, this print that I did, uh, to me, it was strong woman, not, not unlike Wonder Woman, but it just, uh, the strength of the woman as, as a goddess or just the strength. Um, this is <clears throat> my first etching that I did. Um, uh, and you can see the, the influence of um, Art Nouveau in my first etching. Uh, I had a wonderful teacher, Janice Hartwell. Uh, she was one of the only female faculty members um, at, at uh, FSU. And uh, speaking of that, so we never, you know, as, as female artists, there just never were women artists in any of the art history books or any of the museums. So uh, the first time I, I went to London and at the National Gallery of Art and I saw this painting, um, this is Elizabeth uh, Vigie Lebron. And I thought, first thing I thought is, oh, a man painted this, you know, beautiful woman. And when I looked <laughs> at the, the, uh, the card, it was like, it was painted, this is a self-portrait painted by a woman in the 1700s. And it's like, what? <laughs> that just can't be. There are no women artists. Um, as, as somebody said to me one time, I can't remember if I heard this in a movie or whatever, but women aren't artists, they're models. Uh, men are artists, women are models. And this is <laughs> very typical of that time. This is uh, the French painter, Jerome. And these, all these male artists and the model, this was not unlike the FSU faculty, it's just there are more of them. <laughs> when I was growing up, it was all male uh, faculty. So after um, undergraduate school, I got a job uh, as an illustrator, as textbook illustrators. And this is where I, I really learned how to draw. I was drawing five days a week, eight hours a day, getting paid to draw. It was the greatest job. I was working with these wonderful, um, talented artists and it was just a wonderful job. But it really, I really, this is where I really learned how to draw. Uh, and these are some of my illustrations from that time. Uh, so then after a few years of working, I decided, uh, to go back to graduate school. And uh, I was still had a connection with South Florida. My parents were still living. And so I was going to uh, South Florida a lot to visit my parents. And um, at the time, the, the Art Deco district in Miami Beach had just been designated as um, a National Register uh, Historic District. And I had a friend that was working uh, for the Design Preservation League, and I got to tour all these wonderful Art Deco gems um, inside. And, you know, I, these were little hotels that I'd seen all my life, but really never paid attention to them until it became a registered uh, historic district. So 
I, um, I, and I started drawing them and I thought, well, you know, you can't just draw buildings boring. I'm going to put some people in there. And, and I, uh, I've, you know, had, because of my illustrator job, you know, I was really getting confident of drawing people. So I put a uh, fashion uh, bathing suit models in the drawings. So it's like a postcard, like a, you know, postcard for Florida, very kitschy. Um, uh, and then I was also doing uh, Florida Kitsch. Uh, this is probably influenced by uh, Martin Johnson Heed and the tropical flowers and tropical birds. And these, uh, these, this is when I was starting to draw on pastels. Uh, the the two uh, images earlier were just prismacolor. I was just uh, just pure drawing. <clears throat> and this is. Uh, one of my only self-portraits with my my beloved cat Whitey and some uh, you know still adding in the tropical influences. I was living up here in North Florida, but still very influenced by the tropics. And that's a sausage tree on the uh, on the left side, which were all over Miami. Um, so this this was a fun thing. Um, this is my, my last year of graduate school and we had a bomb shelter in our backyard. And uh, so that's uh, my husband and myself and our two friends, Roy and um, uh, Billy McCauley in the bomb shelter for the show that we had. Um, it was just one of the most fun things we ever did. And I don't know if you can see, but over on the side there is uh, uh, on the right side is, is uh, those are my drawings on the side. Um, so then, then um, so now I'm living up in North Florida and, and things are just different here. The light's different and, and a lot of Victorian houses and antebellum homes. And I uh, got really interested in, in these um, dark interiors and, and the light coming through the windows and the curtains. Um, and I, I didn't have a model or models, so I would use my friends. Uh, this is my friend, um, Elena Havlin, and, and uh, inside uh, our friend's house, I took several photos. Um, and, and this is one, these are my two favorites from that series. Um, but I was really uh, interested in these older homes and the, the light and the curtains. And, um, and this was years later. This is a little eerie to me because years later is when I discovered the Danish uh, artist, uh, Wilhelm Hammerschwach. And this is almost the same room. I just couldn't even believe it. I had already done that, that drawing years and years earlier. And then I saw this draw, painting and I was like, whoa. So I started thinking about my heritage and my Scandinavian heritage. And so maybe that's where all this is coming from and why uh, I have this interest. Um, so again, like I said, with the, with the Art and Gazden show, uh, every year I had, uh, you know, the show to look forward to and so I'd go back to my photographs and, and find you know, stuff uh, to draw. And this was, um, that's me on the left, the Medusa. Uh, it was a, a Halloween party uh, in New York City. And this is one of the drawings. And on the left, uh, also from that uh, same party. Uh, and then the, the drawing here on the right, so I, you know, like I said, I would uh, dress my friends up or put them in situations. And that was the, the source of my uh, imagery at the time. Um, again, here's another one. This is in our house. And there's my painting of the Roman courtyard up there, the Angiolo Lemmy. Um, so at, at the same time, I was working uh, as a graphic uh, designer and uh, the uh, environmental group Thousand Friends of Florida commissioned me to do paintings that they would give to um, governors 
politicians, environmentalists, conservationists, um, community activists. Um, every year they, they would give these awards away. And so over the years, I did 150 watercolor. And this is when I really started doing watercolors and teaching myself how to, how to do watercolors. But over the years I had, um, uh, like I said, I did like 150 of these paintings that were given out to different people. And, th and that was a great opportunity because then I really, uh, you know, got interested in watercolor. Uh, so, um, so now this is my mother again. Um, she, I, I took her photo albums and uh, from the 1930s, and I started drawing pictures that were uh, from her, her photographs. Uh, this, is, this is one of her. Um, and this, this painting, or this drawing, this, this is all uh, dry pastels. It won first place at the Art and Gadsden show that year. And then I was invited to, um, to have a one person show at the uh, Okaloosa Walton Community College um, by the uh, uh, the curator um, there, the museum director there. So, um, so that's when I, I decided to take these photographs of my mother's, and I did a whole series of of drawings from these photographs. Uh, she, they were a very good friends with Mike Osceola, uh, and. Uh, 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 and she took a lot of photographs of him. This is in our house in Carl Gables. Uh, they uh, tutored Mike so that he could um, get his high school diploma. And the, the writing at the bottom, that's her handwriting. I would, it was, you know, written in the photo albums and I would just um, uh, write that on the, uh, into the drawing. Uh, this is another one of Mike and the, he was an alligator wrestler at, at the Musa Isle, um, Miccosukee uh, Indian tourist uh, attraction. Uh, and this is, a, you know, another one. It's just a, it was just a wonderful series. Really enjoyed um, working from these photographs of my mother. So very tiny photographs. I had to blow them up really big um, in order to do these. These drawings are large. They're like 30, uh, 30 by 40 inches. Um, and here's uh, Mike's father, the chief William McKinley Osceola. Uh, this one is um, uh, really one of my favorites. Um, I just, I love this feeling of contemplation, loneliness, isolation. It's uh, really, the photograph just really spoke to me. And then this is my mother. Uh, at the time, she had caught the world's record largest shark ever caught off a bridge. And just another one of the stories, there were so many stories uh, in, in my family growing up, um, but the, the shark was pregnant at the time. And so that's uh, why it was so big, but she fought the shark for eight hours on the bridge, uh, the con the causeway between Miami and Miami Beach. Um, and then I don't think this is the same shark. This is another shark, but this was their house on Palm Island. The family uh, developed Palm Island and also, you know, built a lot of houses on uh, Brickell and Bayshore and uh, developed Palm and Hibiscus Island and built the first 10 houses on Palm Island, including the one that they sold to Al Capone. Uh, so <laughs> this... They did not know that they were selling this house to Al Capone because they thought they, they sold it to his lawyer. And uh, that is at the top of the screen um, is, is the Bush's house right there. And then this is Al Capone's house across the street. Uh, so that, that uh, so later um, I went back to the, doing watercolors and uh, this was, uh, at the time, they were doing a fundraiser for the um, Gaston Arts Center, and it was called Art in Bloom. 
And that inspired me to do, I did three uh, paintings uh, with flowers and classical elements and urns. And, um, and these were two of the uh, paintings that I did in that series. The one on the left is um, all North Carolina wildflowers. And the one on the right is Florida uh, flowers. Uh, so then um, these, these are some houses in Quincy, uh, historic homes that, um, that I began painting. Uh, and it just, you know, again, I, I love the sh uh, shadow and the light and um, somebody commented about my purple shadows, but I was really just trying to learn how to do watercolors and, and shadows. Uh, this is one of my favorite watercolors, a little tiny. Um, sea Rock City. Uh, just, this was up in Georgia and, you know, one of those um, things, roadside attractions. It was, uh, so at, after some time I started um, painting uh, uh, historic architecture. I got really in, inspired by uh, going to Savannah and Charleston and, and uh, seeing these beautiful doors and windows and um, the, the art center at the time was to having a show called uh, Out of Pocket where um, artists could sell real tiny uh, paintings four by six. And I thought, well, you know, I'll just do like a door or a window. And so I did a lot of these over the years um, and, and really enjoyed these. Uh, this is another one, this Charleston um, on the left. And then this is the uh, Savannah, um, uh, a cotton exchange um, on, on the right. Uh, so now I'm going back to leaving watercolors, going back to uh, pastels again. And um, I'd had it in my mind. I'd always been fascinated by fashion and fashion illustration. And that's really where I learned how to draw, but, um, uh, you know, uh, seeing those fashion illustrations in magazines and newspapers. and. And I love the idea of uh, wedding dresses and storefronts, especially if they're lit up at night. And so I just had in my mind that I really wanted to do uh, wedding dresses in a storefront. So uh, we were in New York City and we we're walking down Fifth Avenue. And I and also the, the idea of this, the curtains at the stage. And I looked up and I saw this image and it was like, that is the image I've been thinking about for years. And so I did this, this one. And then this is another one I did. This is a, a wedding dress shop in Tallahassee that I used to drive by every night um, to go pick my husband up uh, when he was teaching at FSU. Um, so that was a short lived series. It was the only two. So, so now we're getting to the current show. Um, this is a painting that I saw at the Louvre. I cannot remember who the artist is. I'm, I'm really sorry, but I had seen an image like this almost every day driving home from work at sunset. There was a canal on Capitol Circle and the sun would be setting and it was lit just like this. Um, and, so, and then uh, I started becoming really interested in the uh, Scandinavian landscape uh, painters. This is Kitty Keelan. Uh, she was a Norwegian um, landscape painter. And then this is, um, uh, what's his name? P Peterson. <laughs> let, me, let me look at my notes. I've forgotten his name. Um, yeah, uh, Elif Peterson. And both of these paintings, uh, this painting, and this painting are both called Summer Night. Uh, and they, they just really uh, speak to me, this golden age of uh, Nordic landscape painting and uh, kind of the work that I'm doing now is uh, very influenced by this. So now uh, this is the, the current show uh, that is up. It's called Captured Moments. And, um, Originally, when, when I uh, applied to, uh, to have a show at the Gaston Art Center, I thought it would be a mini re retrospective, some of the pieces that I've just shown you um, over the years. And then the pandemic hit. 
And so I, so I'm just sitting in my backyard. I'm watching butterflies. Uh, there's no people. I can't go to restaurants anymore. I can't travel. I couldn't even see my son. And uh, I just, you know, spent hours sitting in the yard. I planted a butterfly garden so I could watch the life cycle of butterflies. <laughs> that was the most exciting thing in my life. Um, so I, most of the work that's in this show, there's 22 pieces in the show, were all done in the last six months. Uh, I just, I went back, I started looking at all the photographs I've taken over the years of landscapes and, and picked out my favorite. These are just uh, images that were captured first by the camera and now I'm capturing them on paper. Uh, again, but, you know, just devoid of people and just the feeling of isolation or uh, just a feeling of contemplation, uh, what, what have you. But, um, uh, and then, uh, I guess it was in June of this year. So I was working on these, this series, and in June of this year, I'd been seeing a lot of chatter on Facebook that Wakulla Springs had gone clear for the first time in years. They had stopped running the glass bottom boats um, years earlier because the spring had gone dark from uh, uh, runoff um, from the spray field, the uh, water treatment plant, from fertilizer, whatever. And so uh, we hadn't had rain for about a month. And everybody was like, oh, the spring's so clear, so clear. So I went and took a lot of photographs and it was remarkable. And we got to go out on the glass bottom boat uh, just as a fluke. They went out, they looked, they saw it was clear. And so they took some people that were there. They did charges, but you know, we all left donation, but they, it, was, it was probably only maybe a week that they were able to run the glass bottom boats. Um, uh, this is a, a drawing, a, a, paint, a photograph I'd taken years earlier. This is uh, Juniper Springs um, in, in uh, the near, uh, uh, no, 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 this is Rainbow Springs. This is uh, north of Tampa. This is Rainbow Springs. Um, this one on the left, that's Juniper Springs in central Florida. And then the one on the right is the last one that I've done in the series. Uh, that's Cross Creek near Marjorie Kinnan Rollins' house. And I am not done with this series because I just have really enjoyed doing landscapes and I've really enjoyed getting back to pastels and, uh, and focusing on the light. And so I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these. Uh, but I think I have one more slide. Yes. So <laughs> a friend of mine uh, um, said, uh, sent me this cartoon. She didn't even know that I was going to have them, uh, the um, Malaya's uh, death of Ophelia in the slide talk, but she sent this. I was like, oh my God, you've got you've to see the show because um, this is in my talk. And, you know, I just thought it was so, that's <laughs> just really funny. Uh, but that's it. So now I stop the share, right? Yep. Stop okay. the share, wonderful. But I'm gonna keep you featured as a presenter. So wait, I have to spotlight everybody. Here you are. And Angie, cause we're going to move shortly into our question and answer and Don, that fascinating presentation. Um, Angie did a test run with you and she told me how interesting it was. Um, what an amazing family you have. Um, so with that, I will turn this over to Angie and Sarah. Um, Sarah has been monitoring the chat and Angie has some questions as curator and have you shared some questions with Dawn from our listeners today? Wonderful. Well, I don't know if there's any um, questions yet in the chat, but I encourage all of our listeners out there to put any in there. But um, I will ask some, uh, just kind of curious. Um, Dawn, how do you feel, how do you think working as a graphic designer influenced your art? Um, 
I, that's a good question. I think that um, even years of uh, uh, college, um, college classes and graduate school, you really don't, it's just such a lifelong learning. And, um, and working as a graphic artist, just really uh, I learned design. Uh, I learned how to draw because before, uh, before we had desktop publishing, everything was done by hand and uh, everything was drawn, pen and ink. And, uh, and then, you know, I, I worked on one of the first Macintoshes. So that, uh, but, it, but it really, um, you know, really learned about design and, and space and, and just really perfected my skills. Uh, so the career uh, was, was really a, to be paid to do that. It was incredible. <laughs> Absolutely. And just to have those so many hours and hours of, yeah. of drawing something that some things you don't get, you don't get to pick. So I would think that would be just that, um, you know, constant practice. Um, yes. Sarah, 35, there might... 35, 40 years. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And, and, you know, it's, it's cool. Sarah, I think there might be some questions in there if you want to go ahead and ask a few. Yeah. Um, we got one question. Do you think you'll do more South Florida or family paintings? No, I, I, I think I, I, I'm done with that series. Um, I did, there were a few uh, that, that I had thought, well, you know, I'll do these again, but I'm, I'm not working that big anymore. Um, that's, it's, I'm working much smaller now. It's just that working large like that, it's just, you know, a little too difficult, but, um, but I did have some, I, I was really interested in, in, in doing, but I'm, I don't know. I, I, I really like these landscapes. <laughs> I'll be doing that for a while. And I haven't been, it's been 10 years since, since I've been uh, to Miami. We're supposed to go in November for my 50th high school reunion, which got canceled or postponed because of the pandemic. So I was, I was really looking forward to going back to South Florida and, and doing, uh, taking a lot more photographs. Uh, and, and that probably would have spurred some, uh, some new work from that. So maybe next year. Thank you. Um, Jan was curious about your techniques and how you get your images so precise. And she was wondering, do you grid off the photos and enlarge them with a projector um, and then add color if they're black and white? Um, uh, what I did with those is I, uh, I, I scanned all those photographs. And like I said, they were real small. Uh, so I would blow them up and print them out on like 16 different pieces of paper tape them all together and trace them. And, you know, just to get the basic shape uh, and, and then just start coloring it all in with the pastels. Um, but I, I would get the basic composition down by, uh, by these 16 pieces of eight and a half by 11 taped together. <laughs> um. Marissa was curious, what's your perception of women artists in the FSU art department today? Has there been progress? Oh, it, I think it's completely changed. I think it's almost entirely female faculty. I, I don't know. Um, I haven't checked, but I do know that, uh, that it, it's been a complete turnaround um, with the faculty. And, and like I said, when I was there, it was uh, all male faculty. Um, Janice Hartwell, I think, was the only female um, studio uh, faculty. I think there was one other woman who was teaching illustration, but um, I didn't take classes with her, but, but her things were very different back then. And uh, my artwork was probably perceived as um, a little too romantic to, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. Um, but, uh, but I didn't care, I just, I. I did whatever I wanted and what I liked and was very uh, interested in romanticism and classicism and that's what I wanted to do and I did it. Um, uh, one question that I had seen earlier um, uh, 
was asked about the person in New York dressed in black fur. Who is that next to you? Uh, that was a, 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 fr a, a friend of mine. I think he's actually on the chat. Uh, that is, was uh, Susan Gozen. Um, uh, she's a fabulous artist, paper maker, um, and uh, the Dudenay uh, paper mill in New York City. Um, um, and I, I did see an, a question about purchasing Don's work. Um, a lot of these pieces that are on display in the current exhibition, Captured Moments, are uh, for sale through Don. Um, and if you want, you can, um, while you're here looking around, you can fill out a form and then I can get your contact information to Dawn. Um, uh, the only thing is if you do purchase the piece directly from Dawn, it's got to stay on display. <laughs> and this exhibition will be on display through December 11th, um, but you could have it home for the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <Free> <laughs> I, I have to say, um, I see a, a note from Marsha Orr, which um, sounds kind of amazing. I might let Sarah read this because I think this is really fa fantastic. Yeah, you've gotten a lot of very loving comments. Um, but this one in particular says, fabulous Dawn brought me back in time. The line about women not being artists. I first heard it from Fred Holsha when Holsha? I walked in. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> Uh, That's who it was, yeah. says, um, when I walked into the FSU Sculpture Lab for my first class with him, he bellowed, women are not sculptors, women are models. <laughs> right. Great. That's right. <laughs> great exactly. challenge. And as you know, we all became great friends. Right. And, and Fred Holshu was, um, was my, my husband's uh, major professor. Um, but that's, I'm so glad Marcia uh, Remind me, I knew I'd heard that somewhere, and I thought maybe it was a movie. But uh, but Marcia um, has been very uh, inspirational in my career. Um, she actually um, uh, facilitated the purchase of of many of my uh, drawings that are in state buildings. Uh, Marcia facilitated that. Well, Donna, I noticed uh, you you talk a little bit about or a lot about your influences and in looking at different artwork. I saw in the wedding dress pictures, they're sort of Edward Hopper meets um, Mucha, you know, they're <laughs> sort of Art, Art Nouveau meets Edward Hopper. A smash Hopper. up, right? <laughs> um, exactly. And, and then your later, your landscapes and the um, influence of Nordic painting and, and the painting from the Louvre on those. How important do you think it is for children and for working artists to look at other art? I, I'm so glad you asked that question because I was going to, to talk about that. Um, it, me, I did not get to see any great art museums until I was in college. And for children not to be exposed, uh, maybe it's different now because of the internet. And so, uh, you know, there's, but back when I was growing up, all the art history books were in black and white. They weren't even in color. The, the uh, photographs were awful. And um, I, I guess the first in, in Miami, there was only one art museum. It was the Low um, art, art Gallery or Art Museum at the University of Miami. And um, it was small and it mostly had uh, Baroque paintings. And um, I, I just, I don't know, I wasn't that interested. We'd go there on field trips and uh, a lot of Madonna and child paintings, but nothing that really, really talked to me. Um, and it probably, it wasn't until I went to New York City and went to the Met and the, the Modern and, and, uh, and saw this extraordinary art and you have to see it in person. I mean, that's, uh, I didn't go uh, to Europe to the, see the, the great museums in Europe until I was an adult. And I, and, and both uh, my husband and I said, why didn't we see this when we were in college? You know, we, it should be a prerequisite that if you major in art, you have to go to Europe or the Orient or wherever, what, whatever your um, interests are and go see the work in person because it's very, very important. And do you see a difference between, um... You know, seeing the original art and seeing reproductions on a, on a monitor or projected, you know, do you feel there's a substantial difference? 
Oh, yes. Yeah, a- absolutely. Um, even scale. I mean, you could see a, 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 a painting in a book and not realize that it's, you know, 10 by 10 feet. <laughs> you go and see it in print and how the artist was able to actually paint something that large is just amazing. Well, Dawn, um, thank you so much on behalf of all of us on this call. And thank you to everyone who's joined us today uh, for this presentation. Your presentation was amazing. This exhibition is incredible. You can't tell from this photograph how these paintings just have this incredible color and jewel-like quality, the presentation of them as well. Everything about how Dawn has done these is just breathtaking. And one of my art therapy exercises now that this is up is going to be to go and sit in this gallery every morning and just <laughs> take them in. Um, so Dawn, thank you so much. And this is on view through December 11th. We are back to our regular operating hours, Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. Um, we do offer guided group tours for groups of 10 or smaller um, for children or adults. And I also would like to thank again um, our sponsors and our partners for making this celebration of women artists possible. We have, we will have five concurrent exhibitions of work by women artists. Three of them open on October 8th and um, again are up through the middle of December. And we have quite a lot of um, art talks and live online programming still to come. So please check our website. If you're a member, you should have received a mailer about all these programs. And um, if you haven't, let me know and I will send you one directly. Um, but the Celebration of Women Artists is also featured online. So um, thanks a million, Dawn. Thank Great you. A wonderful show. Thank you for your presentation. And um, Thank you all for signing on to join us today. Hope to see you here. Bye. Bye.